Chances are good that if you're a power user, you've been asked more than once, which is the best operating system? Is it Linux? Is it Windows? The answer, of course, is typically whichever tool is best for the purpose. For example, if you're a web developer or a programmer, then perhaps Linux would be the better suit for you. On the other hand, if you're doing audio editing, video editing, gaming, then perhaps your home would be best found within Windows. But typically, power users don't just settle for one or the other. And it's common even for users who are just dipping their feet into uh, Linux to have either two solutions. One is to use a bootable USB device, or the second, of course, is to run stuff like VirtualBox, where you can basically run the um, Linux operating system, whichever ch version you choose, as a virtual machine and get a taste of how it runs, how it functions, and just kind of mess around with it and get a better understanding how the terminals work and so on and so on. But all of this is, well, with some problems. If you're running a dual boot, obviously you need to restart your system, which is not ideal if you're trying to do multitasking. And as a virtual machine, there are performance penalties associated with it. So what's the answer? What magical land can we live in? It's called the WSL2. This allows you to basically run native Linux apps under uh, Windows. And it's not some magical fantasy. It's actually reality and it's really cool stuff. We're going to be taking a look at how it works and also discussing how it can benefit you after this message from the video sponsor. And given that we're going to be talking about Windows and given there's tons of new hardware coming out pretty soon, which of course everyone's going to want to upgrade to new versions of Windows anyway, I suspect it could be the sponsor for you. I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, WhoKeys.com. I frequently use WhoKeys myself to purchase keys for either my own system builds for the channel or for my friends. And for this project, I purchased Windows 10 and then upgraded it to Windows 11. Their website is easy to use and secure and your keys get delivered almost instantly. And right now, it's their autumn sale. You can find Windows 10, Windows 11, Microsoft Office and even games for a hugely reduced price. Plus, you can use our coupon code, RGT, to get an even larger discount on their entire range of software. Activating the promo code is really simple. Just navigate to the project you want to buy, click buy, and then go through the checkout procedure, and then you can add in any discount code. Again, ours is code RGT. And with all of this new hardware coming out, of course, new GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD, and of course the new CPUs and platforms from both AMD and Intel, now is the perfect time to take advantage of this offer. As I mentioned earlier, WhoKeys is safe, legitimate, and Windows keys are available at heavily discounted prices. You can even, of course, purchase a Windows 10 key and then upgrade for free to enjoy those Windows 11 benefits. So utilizing WSL2 then, essentially Linux code can be executed pretty much to the metal, meaning that you get basically no performance penalty. This is really cool because you can install YES applications like Firefox, but if you're doing something a lot more taxing, which really hits the IO system, this can be super beneficial. Now, there are some requirements, of course. For this guide, we're going to be using Windows 11. But at bare minimum, you're going to need uh, Windows 10 uh, version 2004. Now, if you have already messed around with WSL 1, then things work a little bit differently. Now, you can actually upgrade to WSL 2 versions of this stuff. I'm going to leave a link down below if you haven't done so already, and you can see how it works according to Microsoft. For this guide, though, we're going to be assuming that you guys are essentially just starting from scratch and you haven't done this before. This is going to be an ultra simple guide just to get you started. I would highly encourage, of course, for you to test things out yourself, start messing around with things like the Linux desktop, and ultimately, this is kind of a rabbit hole where you can delve as deeply as you choose to. Again, we're going to start things out super duper basic. We're going to have all of the commands on screen. And again, I will also link a Microsoft's guide to this in the video description so you can start delving a little deeper if you so desire. Okay, how do you actually do any of this stuff? Because it sounds really cool, right? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You click on the start menu and then you can type in command for the command prompt. Then you need to run this as administrative permissions by right-clicking, choosing admin. From there, we can see a list of Linux distributions which we can install from the online repositories. There are other ways of doing this, but we're going to keep things really simple for this video. WSL space dash dash list space dash dash online. And again, this gives us a list of specific Linux distributions which we can install. To install a specific Linux distro, we can type in WSL space dash dash install 
space dash D and then whatever Linux distribution we want to install. We'll go through the process of installing a specific Linux distribution in just a moment, but for right now, we'll keep the default option in play, which is Ubuntu. It's widely used in Linux circles and honestly, it's a good jumping off point, I think, for most people. Um, feel free to disagree down below. Anyway, to install this default option, which again is Ubuntu, it's pretty simple. You can type in WSL space dash dash install and then obviously your system will whirl and brr and then probably need to restart just let it do all of that now that your system has restarted and linux has been installed you can launch it from the start menu it'll take a few seconds of whirring yet again and you can choose your username and password of choice this does not need to be the same as your windows password so if your login in windows is bob and you want to go with john here you can absolutely do so there are however some criteria for username and passwords which do depend on the distribution of linux you can see for example how some of my attempts to in uh, input usernames are just not allowed you can change this behavior but for right this moment I'm just going to leave things as default and speaking of experimenting I'll also show you guys how to install a different Linux distribution OpenSUSE it's pretty much exactly the same thing as what we went through before in the command prompt with admin rights a WSL dash dash install space dash D space open suzy dash 42 with 42 being the current version of uh, open suzy or more accurately you can replace this with whatever distribution that you like that we got from the list earlier and now let's update linux shall we just like any windows distribution or any operating system there will of course periodically be new updates available now we're going to be only be using terminal right now and we're going to be adding additional software in just a moment but first of all launch your linux distribution of choice we'll again be using ubuntu and type in sudo space apt that's apt space update and then of course it's probably going to ask you to enter your appropriate password it'll take a few moments for all of the relevant updates to be found but at this point no changes have actually been made to your operating system you can then upgrade these packages by typing in the exact same thing as a moment ago, but replace update with upgrade. Again, after a few moments of wiring, stuff is upgraded. Hey guys, do you want to see my nice package? Well, I'm going to show you how to install nice ones in just a moment. So in the Linux terminal, we can type in sudo space apt space install application goes here. I want to install both Firefox and the image manipulation program GIMP, which is fantastically named, I think. You can see on screen the instructions. Basically speaking, you can Google to see whatever application name is you need to type for installing using this command. Obviously, you do have options to install things in different manner, but for now, we're just going to use sudo apt install Firefox and same thing, but with GIMP. Before we run any of this software though, we need to do one final step and that is update and shut down and restart WSL. Go back to the Windows command prompt and type in WSL space dash dash update. This pretty much does exactly what it says on the tin. It will then start to upgrade all of the stuff you've installed. And now we need to restart it. The simplest way of doing this is by typing WSL space dash dash shutdown. And then you can turn it back on by just typing in WSL again. After this, you can then pretty much just access any application you've already installed into Linux. This means you can basically run, for example, GIMP utilizing the Windows 11 uh, GUI and do whatever you want. You could have a distribution of Linux installed for Firefox and then you can use that Firefox independently of your Windows Firefox and so on. It's pretty cool stuff. So there you go guys, this has been a bit of a fun project, but honestly, I've only just scratched the surface in terms of the functionality. While a lot of this might seem a novelty at first, running Firefox, for example, Linux version alongside Firefox Windows version, it does have a ton of performance and power advantages. For example, if you're a web developer, you could run Apache for Linux and then start doing some development and testing, utilizing either other Linux operating systems um, or you could even run it on, say, as a, a Windows and start doing testing that way. 
Furthermore, you could do some really cool stuff if you wanted to set up some file servers. And just generally speaking, you can do some really interesting stuff, pretty much limited only by your imagination. And it's also very cool for games developers as well with a ton of potential functionality. So that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have liked it, of course, then you know what to do. Leave a like on the video because, well, it's YouTube and also subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.